Welcome back to the watch list. I'm Nicole Petalides. Want to take a close look at the airlines, United Airlines in particular, which came out with this quarterly report, beat the street and said that the demand environment remains strong. Joining me right now, Jared Bill Billis is with us, Airlines Managing Director, S&P Global Ratings. Thank you for being with us. What did you make of what you read through here and heard from UAL? Hi, Nicole. First of all, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I think overall it's a it, it's a good, uh, strong start to the year. Um, you know, pretty consistent with what Delta had said last week. Um, I think it was positive to see uh, earnings go up as much as they did, um, and the fact that um, losses were were relatively limited considering the impact of the uh, the parked Boeing uh, Max Nine. So, I think clearly you're seeing that in the share price today. Um, I think you know there was a lot of uncertainty as to you know what the impact. You know some of the some of the uh, the Boeing related issues, uh, among others, uh, may have had on the quarter, but clearly the uh, um, I, I think it's a solid start to the year. So you know overall, I think you know the key takeaways for me is you know demand is setting up to be uh, pretty solid, uh, at least through through Q2, uh, both domestically and internationally, and I think that that should bode, bode well for uh, for revenues and help mitigate some of the cost pressures that the that United and the airlines in general are facing. Look, I mean, all of this is contingent upon the economy. And we just got the Fed beige book, you know, just basically employment rose at a slight pace. Economic activity expanded slightly. Um, modest eco expansion when it comes to energy. Um, the, basically, we're still seeing some strength. And if you call to get, I don't know, the last few times, every time I call to get a seat on an airplane it's going somewhere, there's not many available and they're astronomically expensive. So it makes me feel like the group is doing well. Is the group doing, well? that's not the way to do it, right? They have headwinds and all kinds of costs and I get it. Is the group doing well though? Or is it really just like the United Airlines Delta versus the others? Well, I think the, the, the network carriers are certainly doing well. Um, you know, I, I think you have to take a step back and say, well, as in, you know, relatively stable to perhaps some moss improvement from a, a strong uh, 2023. Uh, but overall, load factors are still high. The demand is still there. Um, it's a question of whether it stays because, as you mentioned, you know, fares are still pretty expensive. Um, you know, relatively stable um, is the expectation, at least from our perspective and, and some of the commentary we've heard. On the flip side, you're seeing some pressure some from, from the lower cost airlines. Uh, where you know they're just not able to compete to the same extent that they did previously, simply because of those cost pressures. Um, so I think overall, you know, there, there's still a, a well-established relationship between GDP and airline revenues, and you know, it, the expectation is we won't get all of those revenues that were lost during the pandemic back. But there's certainly a good case to be made that uh, that there still remains some pent-up demand, and our economists expect another strong year of. Uh, in the U.S., certainly at 2.5 percent real GDP growth, so I think that bodes well. Um, the services component of the, of, of the equation is expected to remain strong, so I think overall that continues to bode well uh, for the airlines and their ability to improve their revenues this year, and, and, and as you mentioned, mitigate some of the costs that, that are being faced. Notably, labor um, fuel is obviously an uncertainty, but you're seeing some other. Uh, inflationary pressures through maintenance costs and, and, and elsewhere. So uh, overall, I think for the network carrier, certainly it's, it's starting out to be, uh, you know, a, a favorable year. Yeah, understood. Uh, when we look at name like Delta, I mean, so often when I have guests on, Jared, and I ask them which is their favorite in the group, they go to Delta. Does that make sense to you when they say that? Do you see why they say that? Why do you think they say that? Well, I, you know, we Delta, we rate Delta higher than United. We have a double B plus with a positive outlook uh, on our credit rating for Delta, um, whereas for United, it's double B minus with a stable outlook. And I think the big reason for that is simply historically and prospectively, their margins are are expected to be a little bit higher. Uh, historically, they, they've had the advantage relative to to United and others, uh, and and that goes a long way through um, you know generation of cash. And the other point is their leverage is lower, so you know. You know, going forward, we would expect that you know further balance sheet improvement enables the company to have a little more uh, financial flexibility, uh, ability to get that leverage down a little bit lower. So I think you know, speaking from a credit rating perspective, uh, you know, a lot of it boils down to the margin profile and the debt profile. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the gap has is not um, 
it's not that it's certainly not widening widening um, it's you know the, the the gap is certainly narrowed within the within those two peers and what about some of the others? I mean, if United and Delta are in the B range, right, the double B plus for Delta, for example, I have to assume you don't have any A's. If you do, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and some of the other names that come. To yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Southwest is, is another name that we that we rate in the U.S., um, triple B rating. Um, big reason for that is, is simply because they're net ca they have a net cash position, so they have more cash than they have debt outstanding. Um, clearly, that has a, a, a tremendous benefit from a credit rating perspective. Um, and you know, so historically, the company has also been uh, you know ha had the strength of a margin profile going forward. They're, they've had some hiccups, you know, of late, but but big driver for the 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 gap in ratings and the investment grade rating for Southwest is simply the fact that. Uh, their balance sheet is is substantially stronger um, relative to uh, the broader peer group. That was for Southwest. Is that what you said? Yep. Yes, Southwest. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, I see Alaska here. Um, there's a lot about Boeing safety that comes on the yep. heels of what happened last January. Um, you know, UAL is getting, I don't know, less than half, but. Uh, 61, 61 planes, I think, instead of 101 planes delivered. How much of a headwind is the Boeing story? Could it crush the airline industry or they can deal with it pretty well? Yeah, I, I certainly don't think it's going to crush the airline industry. Um, clearly, it um, reduces the pace of um, replenishment. Um, you know, there's there's fuel efficiency gains associated with having these new planes. They're simply nicer to, to fly newer planes than older ones. Um, but there's also the ability um, to extend the life of some of the older planes until the new deliveries are, are received. Uh, and that can only go on for so long, but we'd anticipate at some point uh, these delivery delays will ease. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's a near-term headwind for, for capacity. And I think that was one of the concerns with uh, with United is, is, is the impact that some of this might have had. But on the flip side, um, it also gives them a little bit of um, financial flexibility, at least over the near term. Um, in the case of, of United, they don't have to spend quite as much on, on capital expenditures for new aircraft this year. And clearly, by not having those uh, th those payments, it, it, it gives a little. It gives them the ability to generate more cash flow and, and presumably some positive free cash flow, uh, which the company expects to, to generate um, increasingly over the next three years. So, um, not all is bad with some of these delays, but. Uh, it, it makes planning a little bit more difficult, but it's certainly, um, you know, we expect the, the environment to be a little more normalized regardless. So the, the fact that there are delays is no, it, it, you know, it, it, at the margin, it can have some um, tempering effect on the ability to, to, to grow revenues, but overall not something that's going to crush the industry, certainly. Have you, and this one's out of the box, it's fine if, you, if the answer is no. Um, if you don't care to share about Joby Aviation and flying taxis and they're going to, you know, rival Uber, Manhattan to JFK Airport. Um, what's going on in sort of the out of the box airline stories? Anything else that's been jumping out at you or taking your attention? Uh, we, we So now we know the obvious. And of course, the, you know, higher oil prices is something that could be a headwind for this group, um, depending on how they hedge. But Jared, any final thoughts on and maybe something we hadn't thought of? Well, I, I can't comment on Joby, but I would say with fuel prices, it's it's clearly um, something that we watch. Fuel prices are, are are unpredictable and pretty small changes in the prices can have an outsized effect on earnings. So it's something that we watch. Um, another, a big reason for that is that most of the airlines don't meaningfully hedge their exposure. Um, the expectation is that if, if fuel prices go up, generally speaking, you can you can pass those along. There will be a lag, um, but it you know over a, a you know quarterly periods, um, you can have an outsized impact if you get an unexpected increase in, in fuel prices, for example. So um, it's certainly something that adds to the volatility of the sector. But to this point, um, you know we expect it to be you know relatively stable through this year, but something that that we're going to watch uh, on an ongoing basis. Yeah, we'll continue to watch it too. I mean, we have oil down 3%, but, um, you know, obviously a big story for these transportation stocks overall. Jared Billis, thank you so much. Airlines Managing Director, S&P Global Ratings. Thanks for joining us on the show, Jared.